Hi Sagittarius. Welcome to your mid-October reading. So, uh, what happened was I got really, really sick. And I remained really sick for about three weeks. I'm just now starting to feel better and have a voice and not be coughing every five seconds. It wasn't cohesive with the amount of times I had to stop and start. But also kind of excited because I feel like there's an intuitive element to these readings that I personally have been missing. And I have to do them. You guys have to watch them, but I have to do them. <laughs> so, of course, uh, I would like to also make myself happy. Um, and I really enjoy intuitive readings. So here we are, starting off with that tower card. That's no surprise to anyone who's been waiting for their reading, but just in general, Mars in Gemini has been an extremely difficult thing for Sagittarius to deal with, and we can talk about why. I think it's worth talking about why, because a lot of what you're experiencing doesn't seem to have much of a logical basis. And once things don't make sense logically, the way you are triggered by that, there's very few things that can get under your skin to that extent. Useless, illogical, chaos, this really bugs you. Now, it bugs you in general when you see it around you, it bugs you when people indulge in chaos, but when it needlessly rips through your life and makes you feel like all the different ways in which you've built yourself up, your career, your financial standing, your wardrobe, your skin, anything that requires constant upkeep and maintenance, if you feel like you put the work in step by step and in a few fell swoops, it was all turned to rubble. That Mars and Gemini energy is to blame. And you know that. And it makes you resentful. It makes you angry because I can't just hide. I have to be out there in the world. And that means since I can't hide, that means that every time I do step out into the world or engage with the world in some way, there is either this strange, nefarious plot being revealed to me that I really don't want to know. Some truth or other about people, an organization, right? Someone you have to work with, someone you have to be around, where you're like, these are truths about this person that I really don't need to know. This is tea that I don't want. I don't want to be involved in this. I feel like I'm getting sucked into things that have nothing to do with me, that are super toxic. And the only, it's like being between a rock and a hard place. The only way out of this is to just cut ties with a lot of people. And that also feels very weird because then it feels like you're using it as judgment. You're using it as a way to get something. Now, Sagittarius, you have been accused of this before. You have in the past been told by me and by others that you can use your actions and this truth that you're very good at directing, very much an arrow hitting a target. You can use that ability to sway people and get them to do what you want. So it's still logic, it's still truth, but it's done with an intention to lead people in a direction that you want them to go. Fine, so that's pretty manipulative. You guys do it, all mutable signs do it in their own way. Geminis will talk your ear off until you'll do whatever they want, so they'll just shut up, right? Virgos will logic you to death until you absolutely begin to think that their way of thinking is the only way of thinking. Pisces will overwhelm you with their emotions to the point where you begin to think you've never had an emotion. They're the only ones who've ever had an emotion, and so you defer to them. And Sagittarius will hit you again and again and again with this unerring logic, much like Virgos, but the Virgo logic assault is subtle. It's very powerful. It's slow though. It moves slow and it's subtle. 
you guys don't appreciate the slowness. You hit people really hard with whatever truth it is that goes in the direction you want them to go in, even though you have a larger scope of all the truth. You choose which truths to tell people to get them to go in certain directions. Now, you do that naturally, but when you have to do it purposefully, when you feel like you're being made to do it, you don't want to, right? You can feel at this time like you are being pushed into being around certain people, into being around certain situations that you don't agree with, that you don't want to be around, that you don't want to charm your way out of or logic your way out of. You just want to be done with it. So for those of you who are involved in something that you want to be done with but you can't get away from, there is this unending restlessness just... I want to get out. I can't do this anymore. I don't like the way this is going. I haven't liked it for a really long time. And even though I keep breaking away from all these different things in my life, thinking this will be the thing that frees me. This will be the thing that finally makes me feel free. Finally makes me feel like I can move forward. It feels like every decision you've made towards that particular target has actually taken you in the other direction. And you're beginning to feel the frustration and the, the circularity of it. Like, I thought I was moving forward. Why am I now waking up to the fact that I've been going in a circle? And where did all that energy go that I've been expend, right? Like, I've been using up all this energy. I've been creating this extra energy so I would have it to get out. And the more I put in, the more stuck I feel. The more I wriggle, the more I sink. Now, after a while, that's going to get to a Sag because you're a creature of motion. This dual-natured sign that you are, you are very much that bow and arrow and you are still very much the horse as well. A horse that is not allowed to move because every time it moves counterintuitively, it gets more stuck is where you are right now. Now, for the last two weeks, was there anything that could be done about it? No. Is there anything that can be done about it now? Not really. I mean, Mercury's moved into Libra, so you have more words to say what's wrong, but that doesn't actually take away what's going on. So then, Umber, what the fuck? Like, what can actually help? You just have to keep hitting targets that don't mean anything and hoping and praying that one of them makes you feel free? No. I think it's about being a lot more honest with yourself about direction. What do I mean by that? I mean that there are a lot of things that you may want to do. A lot of things that you think you can do very well. A lot of things that you think will give you that sense of accomplishment, contentment, that you're looking for success. Or even for many of you, what you're actually looking for is a sense of fulfillment. But <sighs> as difficult as this is to express, if you continue to look for a sense of fulfillment in what you do as opposed to who you are or what you are. You're not going to find it. You will find again and again that lack reflected back to you as your ego, which is the one that's wanting to be fed here, takes hit after hit. Now, the thing that makes this even more messy is that when you don't get the wins that you want and you don't get the boost that you need or that you're looking for, you have a tendency to go looking for that ego boost in other areas of life and to do so pretty aggressively. 
Now, are you saying that this is an existential issue, Umber? Are you saying that no matter what I was doing for a living or how far along I had gotten, I still would be feeling this way? Yes. And not just because you keep moving the goalpost either. Oh, I'm just challenging myself. No, no. I mean that you're on the wrong road. You're galloping down a road that you think leads to contentment and fulfillment, but you're on a loop. There is no contentment and fulfillment at the end of this road. There isn't even an end to, to this road. I just realized in Matrix Revolutions in the third one that the train man jumps in front of a train that says that it's going on a loop. <laughs> you guys are like on a loop because you're looking for something very specific and you're on absolutely the wrong road. You're not even on a road that goes anywhere. As you start to wake up to this, there are stages of anger that you're going to go through with yourself. And most of you are on a spectrum of that right now. You're on some marker of this spectrum of realizing that you have been running at breakneck speed, going nowhere. So you're either angry with yourself because you've just realized this, or you have an enormous amount of compassion for yourself because you realized it a while ago, but you don't know what to do about it. So what can you do? Well, the truth is, this is one of those paradigm shifting moments for you. You've got to decide if you're grown up enough to admit to yourself and everybody around you that what you do for a living and who you think you are in this world is not your sense of worth and it can't be where you draw your strength or your love for yourself. It's too arbitrary. It goes up and down. It doesn't, it, it's not a safe thing on which to base your worth. Now being competitive, being resourceful, being strong, you've gotten away with basing your worth on your accomplishments for a really long time because you get it done. Still doesn't make it accurate or right or healthy. Now it, it could be unhealthy and be true, I don't think I would deter you, but it's not even true. Sure, you can use accomplishments and goal setting and success in general, winning, which is what your, you know, what your real juice is. You can use all that to bolster yourself. You can use all of it to garner a sense of accomplishment and a sense of peace temporarily. But as you are noticing, it doesn't last. Well, why doesn't it last? Why is it always replaced with more longing, with something you want more, with something that's better, with something that's next? And why in that pursuit are you, your feelings, your delicate sensibilities, the thing that gets trampled? Because you're basing, once again, your happiness, your value, how much or how little you deserve to be loved, how you can and cannot be treated, you're basing it on all of it, on an externality. It's like you forget. It's like you forget that this is Maya, this is Dunya, this is that the world is a lie. It's like you forget and you get so far out into the game, you become so immersed that you forget that none of this matters and it begins to matter a lot. And whenever you make the dunya, whenever you make the world matter a lot, when you tie your value, when you tie your happiness, when you tie your sense of peace to anything in this world, a thing, a place, a person, an idea, you will suffer for it because this world is changeable and fickle and is meant to be so as to give you something to learn from. So you can't resent 
the game itself. The game hasn't done anything. The game is there to be played, so you'll get better. You can't resent yourself for falling on your face. You're meant to make mistakes. The game isn't meant to be won, only survived. There is no winning. Surviving is winning. Evolving is the best you're going to get. And from what I can tell, in nature, evolving is a lot of falling on your face and getting back up. So there's no judgment here. There's no one pointing fingers at you and saying, ha ha, look, you got super immersed again. How could you, dummy? No, it's normal. We all do it. And as soon as we do it, we lose perspective. Perspective on what? What am I driving at this whole time? I know you hate when I do this. It's a really Japanese thing to do. Talk all the way around the point until the point is completely encircled. And then the target in the middle doesn't need to be hit. It's just sitting there so fucking obvious. But if you want me to hit it, I will. It's going to keep hurting until you let it go. It's not meant to be held on to. And when you get stressed out or when you start to think that you might not be enough, you start holding on really, really tight. And when you hold on really, really tight to something that you're not meant to hold on to, when you hold on really tight, to something that you're meant to learn how to let go of, it hurts really bad. And it becomes personal because you're making it personal, because you're making it a reflection of something that it is not reflective of. Your value, your worth, your purpose for being here, your art, your vision, your words, even your competitiveness, even your winning. Anything and everything that makes you who you are. It doesn't have anything to do with numbers. It doesn't have anything to do with a list. It doesn't have anything to do with how you look or what you have. And I know, I know these things are very triggering to you because you spend so much of your toneness of your life of the of the energy in your limbs and muscles you spend it making this world real for yourself so it hurts really bad when you realize that it's not once again damn it i forgot again that's okay we all forget again it's all right you think it's easy to remember when you're sick as a dog that the world isn't real? There are many ways that you get pulled back into the world and the world makes itself the realest thing there is. And that's, and that's the battle. That's the test. Can you be completely immersed in the most impressive, immersive experience ever created and still remember that you are more than what you can see and feel and hear and smell? that you are something beyond this place, that you are more powerful than it, that you are stronger than even you know in this particular plane. All of that only comes with calm and you can turn that calm into pain by filling up that emptiness with all the different ways that you should dominate this world and you aren't. Or you can fill that calm with compassion and love and you can stop looking outside of yourself for someone to provide that cup to in some way feed this insatiable ego. You can stop outsourcing. You can stop outsourcing your value to the world. You can stop outsourcing your attractiveness or your attractiveness to some external person out there and the way they respond to you. You can stop going down that checklist in your head of all the different ways that you should have done it by now. And instead, you can begin to remember why you're actually here. I think sometimes 
the truly mind-blowing magical nature of being alive is a little too much for the Sagittarius logical brain. It creates a fury within you. And those of you who are deeply spiritual or religious, you find a channel for it. And those of you who are not can often use the knowing of it as a weapon against yourself. I suggest, regardless of what you believe, that you spend the next couple of weeks getting very centered on all of the things and all of the ways that you are completely invaluable and that have nothing to do with how much you can make, how much you can produce, who you know, who you can connect, or what you can get done. When you can list those things easily, freely, I promise you, you'll feel better. It's going to take a couple more weeks, but then, you know, by then you'll be watching a Halloween Sagittarius video of you as the fifth element's supreme being. So, you know, there's perks. There's perks to the work. <laughs> The extended will be on Patreon, on Vimeo, and there is an instant PayPal link below. I love you. I hope you feel a little better. <laughs>